when it was painfully obvious that the person who crashed my car was not going to fix it and insurance had declined because he was recklessly speeding, I was forced to make a tough decision. Do I sell it to the highest bidder for just under 75,000 rands or do I attempt to fix it out of pocket? Mind you, insurance said it would take just under 600,000 rands excluding unforeseen damage to get this car on the road again. I guess we'll have to see but so far we might prove them wrong. Both of these decisions have implications but only one gives me a second chance at enjoying GV again because 6 months with this car was just not enough and having to work more years to get another one of these again was a tough thing to think of. So I took the decision to fix it and no not for 600k or at least I hope. In the last video me and the boys brought this car to Kara 72 as they will be carrying out the bodywork on it and just before they can continue I need to get the parts and remove the engine. So there's so many things here that you could take you know, F20, F21, everything is here. So even these ones, which is everything as well. So we find most of the parts that I need, including this piece of wiring here. Um, so I'm gonna cut it all the way from here to here. This already got. I don't even think this one fits on my car. So we finished with stripping the cars that we were stripping there at the yard. Got the airbag. Got the cradle. Got um, the radiator packs the shock uh, i'm gonna replace the shock with new shocks but i just need the guys of g72 to be able to move the car around so the hubs and everything is the only thing that i'm missing now is the light um and then i'll also need to buy what need to buy a new radiator i need to buy a new new shocks as well but i have most of the things that i needed to almost finish the build almost the dashboard and everything is there so the radiator yeah it's exactly the yeah, same yeah we took the right one yeah so this red pack and the cradle it's a bit dirty it just needs to be cleaned up you might realize the intake scoop is on the right side when it's supposed to be on the left for the N55s and the bottom bumper support is not the correct one but we'll get the right things as we go intake I don't think I'm gonna buy a new one because it's fine uh dashboard also found a dashboard it came with the airbag as well which is nice so the reason we have to replace this intercooler if you remember from the last video this thing is cracked there eh? and that's not the only thing that's damaged there were so many other things like the thermostat that we have to replace and to make matters worse i bought the wrong part with this bracing as well and then for the wiring which we were really stressed about I uh, managed to cut off some of the pieces from the donor car that we got. I think I might have forgotten these ones. Um, so we'll have to check. Danko, 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 danko. I'm not too happy. Landed here to fetch tools to remove stuff from jewelry and put stuff back on in jewelry. I'm not sure when the parts run is gonna stop because this time we had to go all the way to Mpumalanga to get the bonnet fender and the bumper because I got those off of TikTok for a still I believe. After we were done we dropped the parts off at garage 72 and I also made sure to make a stop at Brakban to get the front anti-roll bar because last time I magically bought the wrong one which is nice. I bought the wrong one which was for 4 cylinder engines so I had to get the one that clears the 6 cylinder engines. was right because for most of us here it was the first time we removed an engine but luckily we have Washington and he removes engines for a living so this is gonna go well hey bro too many hands <laughs> too many hands <laughs> I'll take over when someone's tired <laughs> <laughs> he's just here for vibes bro he's not even serious about his content game you'd have your camera out if you ah, were bro. serious bro. I'm, I'm ready you're ready i'm ready two phones i'm ready damn okay uh, yes sir uh, uh, Ooh, yeah we're gonna need a new out here taking the credit <laughs> we're gonna need a new one <laughs> no? out, let me see 
Wait, is this oil? Okay, it's a BMW, so it's not. Uh, last yeah, Wait, yeah, is it the new one needed, or can you yeah. just? Cause nah, it's bent here. Yeah, just... Hey, James, don't strip the engine. Get your bunya got the parts. <laughs> gonna try, gonna try not strip the motor as much as possible. Yeah, no problem. You get what I'm saying? So when you come back, um, just yeah. Push position. Bro had to set up the light for the baddies. <laughs> Let me give a quick list of some of the things that need to go. Yeah. Go down. Exhaust must come off. Belly plate must come off. After we drop the exhaust, the prop shaft, the uh, drive shaft must come out. Mm. And then once that's one side, the motor is essentially sort of alone. My brother, how's the engine holding onto the body? The pin pin by like there are these bolts. Yes, just... those bolts that we were talking about mm. they need to come out. We like these tips didn't even last. They didn't that's even last two check weeks. Check boy. Check hey, they didn't even get to marinate, bro. Prop shaft is out there. Exhaust is out, everything underneath is gone. At this point, we were ready to remove the engine. Just under four hours later, we had removed everything that connects to the engine and it was just a matter of taking it out. We had to resort to using this yellow strap because we could not find hinges that you can use to hold the motor in. So this was what we got. We went to the garage and bought it. It can hold like four tons of stuff. So the engine being around 300 kgs or so, it was just enough to do the job. <laughs> This piece here had to be removed because it was gonna scratch the alternator when we were removing the engine. So Washington quickly got his hammer out and he put all his strength in making sure to remove that piece off the front. And in no time, we were finally removing the engine. This was so real. I didn't think it was gonna happen so quick or even on that day, but we did it. Let's go backwards. Yeah, backwards. Thank you. Up, back, back. Up, 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 Back, and just back yeah. Wait. Yeah, you can pull. There's just one. There's nothing else connected, man. No, no, there isn't. Anyone here? Can you all just shut up, man? Yeah. yeah. Anyone hearing noise. noises? Nothing, no. man. No. no, no so, go back. Back, push. So the main thing is wait. balance. Back. Uh, back. Out, it's out. Yeah, it's on back. Guys, balance the gearbox at the back, man. When it... I was happy that we managed to remove the engine, but as surprisingly, I found more damage. Yeah, mount yeah. got broken. Yeah. This mount is broken too. But I have to be grateful because not only did we manage to remove the motor on the same day so that Gary 72 can begin, the guys were really, really helpful. So a shout out to Washington and the guys that we were able to finally remove this motor. Gary 72 can get started. And when there's more updates, I'm going to make sure to post them. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like, you comment, everything. You can also follow me on social media where I post more frequent updates. Or you can join the membership on the channel, which will definitely help to watch the build. So this is all for now. Cheers. Jeff is somewhere in there on the chase straight now. Still getting busy with that one. And hopefully soon, soon, um, they'll be done and we'll be coming back to fit the engine and all the other parts and the car can drive again.